everybody, Miss Roberts here for chapters one and two of High Tide in Hawaii. Where today I'm going to kind of take you on an adventure through my day. We're starting here at home before I leave and head to school, and then I'll record a few chapters there. And then um, as I go from place to place, I'll keep recording throughout the day. Sorry, I found a piece of plastic on me. But anyway, it's time to get started with chapter, well, the prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. Eight-year-old Jack and his seven-year-old sister Annie climbed into the treehouse. They found that it was filled with books. Jack and Annie soon discovered that the treehouse was magic. It could take them to the places in the book. All they had to do was point to the picture and wish to go there. While they are gone, no time at all passes in Frog Creek. Along the way, Jack and Annie discovered the treehouse belongs to Morgan Le Fay. Morgan is a magical librarian of Camelot, the long-ago kingdom of King Arthur. She travels through time and space gathering books. Jack and Annie have many exciting adventures helping Morgan and exploring different times and places. In Magic Treehouse books 25 to 28, which we're on 28, they learn the art of magic. Chapter 1. A Ship? Jack and Annie were sitting on their porch, reading books. Jack was reading about gorillas. Annie was reading about pilgrims. Suddenly, Annie closed her book. She looked it up into the sunset. Hey, Annie said with a smile. Jack looked over at her. It's back, she said, jumping up. Oh, man, br breathed Jack. He knew she was talking about the magic treehouse. Annie could always tell when it was back. Jack closed his book and stood up. We're going, in, we're going to the woods, he called through the screen door. There's something we have to check on. Be back before dark, their mom said. We will, said Jack. He picked up his backpack. Then he and Annie headed across the yard. When they got to the sidewalk, they started running. They ran up their street and into the Frog Creek woods. In the last light of the day, they hurried between the trees. Finally, they came to the tallest oak. They held their breath as they looked up. The magic tree house was back. Good going, said Jack. Thanks, said Annie. She, stared, she started up the ladder. Jack followed. It was nearly dark inside, but the sun-dried wood smelled like a summer day. What kind of special magic will we look for this time? asked Jack. They glanced around the treehouse. They saw scrolls they brought back from Shakespeare's theater. They saw a twig from the mountain gorillas and a pouch of corn seeds from the first Thanksgiving. There, said Annie. She pointed at, at, to a book in the corner. A piece of paper was sticking out of it. Jack picked up the book, and then he pulled out the paper and read, Dear Jack and Annie, good luck on your fourth journey to find a special magic. The secret rhyme will, this secret rhyme will guide you. To find a special magic, build a special kind of ship that rides the waves both high and low on every kind of trip. Thanks. Thank you, Morgan. Jack looked at Annie. A ship? He said. She shrugged. Yep, I guess we have to build a ship. Where do we go to build it? She and Jack looked at the book's cover. It showed palm trees, a beach, and a beautiful ocean. The title was A Visit to Old Hawaii. Oh, wow, said Annie. I love Hawaii. How do you know you love it? Jack asked. We've never been to Hawaii. Well, we're going now, said Annie. She pointed to the cover. We wish we could go there. She's... The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. And then everything was still. Absolutely still. Ooh, look at that picture. Chapter 2. Aloha. Jack opened his eyes. A gentle wind brushed against his skin. The smell, it smelled sweet and fresh. Annie looked out the window. Nice, she said. Jack looked out too. The tree house had landed on top of a palm, tall palm tree. The palm tree was on the edge of the flowery meadow. On one side of the meadow, a cliff dropped down the beach and, to the beach and ocean. On the other side of the meadow were rooftops of a small village. Beyond the village were tall gray mountains. Misty clouds hid their peaks. Waterfalls gu gushed down their sides. I told you I loved Hawaii, said Annie. Don't you? I have to learn about it first, said Jack. He pushed his glasses into place and opened his research book. He read aloud, Hawaii is a chain of islands in the Pacific Ocean. The largest island is Hawaii, which gives its name to the whole group. The islands were formed millions of years ago by volcanoes. 
The volcanoes erupted under the ocean. Over time, their craters rose above the water. Wow, said Annie. We're on top of a, of a volcano? Yes, yeah, said Jack. He read on. The volcanic rock crumbled and turned to soil. Over millions of years, wind and birds dropped seeds on the island. Plants and trees began to grow, and birds and insects made their homes. Cool, said Jack. He took out his notebook and pencil and wrote, Wind and birds brought seeds. He read more. About 2,000 years ago, people first came to Hawaii. They came in canoes from other islands in the Pacific. They rowed for thousands of miles across the ocean, guided only by wind and stars. Hey, listen, said Annie. She put down the... Jack put down the book and listened. Sounds of music and laughter floated on the breeze. There must be a party in the village, said Annie. Let's go. What about building a ship, asked Jack. We'll figure that out later, said Annie. Let's meet some people at the party. Maybe they can help us. She stared da started down the ladder. Jack heard a whoop of laughter in the distance. The party does sound fun, he thought. He picked up his things and followed Annie down to the ground. The sun was low in the sky. They walked through the meadow towards the village. Everything was bathed in golden red glow. Oh man, breathed Jack. There was a beauty there was beauty everywhere. Purple flowers shaped like bells, white flowers that looked like stars, tall feathery ferns, green spiky plants, big orange and black butterflies, and tiny yellow birds. When they got close to the village, they saw an open area filled with people. Jack and Annie slipped behind a palm tree. They peeked out at the party. There were about 50 people, including grown-ups, teenagers, and little kids. They were all barefoot and wore wreaths of flowers around their necks. A woman was chanting. Her words rose and fell like waves. She chanted about, volcano go uh, about a volcano go goddess named Pele. While she chanted, other people played music. Some blew on pipes that looked like flutes. Others shook gourds that sounded like baby rattles. Some hit sticks together to make a clicking sounds. Most of the villagers were dancing to the music. They stepped from side to side. They swayed their hips and waved their hands. They're doing the hula, whispered Annie. She smiled and waved her hands too. Don't get carried away, whispered Jack. He took out their book and found a picture of the Hawaiian dancing. He read, the early Hawaiians had no written language. They told stories with hula dancing. The hula is a blend of dancing and chanting poetry. Jack pulled out his notebook and started a list about early Hawaii. No written language started with hula, stories with hula. Suddenly, Jack heard loud laughter and clapping. He looked up. Annie was gone. Jack peeked out from behind the tree. Annie was doing the hula with the dancers, but no one seemed surprised. Everyone just smiled at her as they kept dancing. A girl caught sight of Jack. She looked about Annie's age. She had long, shiny black hair and big, a big, friendly smile. Come do the hula, she called to him. No way, breathed Jack. He slipped behind the tree again, but the girl danced over to him and took his hand. Join us, she said. No thanks, said Jack. The girl didn't let go. She pulled Jack into the open. The music got louder. The dancers and musicians nodded and smiled at Jack. Jack stood still. He didn't know any kind of dance, let alone the hula. He stared at the ground, clutching his backpack and notebook until the music and dancing ended. The Hawaiians gathered around Jack and Annie. They all had friendly, open faces. Who are you? The young girl asked. I'm Annie, said Annie. This is my brother Jack. I'm Kama, the girl said. This is my brother Boca. She pointed to the boy in the crowd who looked about Jack's age. The boy stepped forward. He grinned a big grin, just like his sister. He pulled off his wreath of red flowers. He put it around Annie's neck. I lay to welcome you, Boca said. Kama then pulled off her lay and put it on Jack's neck. Aloha, Jack and Annie, everyone said. And that is the end of chapter two. I will pick up, I will read with you soon chapters three and four. But first, I have a new um, tool for us to use in the steam room. And it is a 3D printer. And um, I've been working at home to try to figure out how to use it so we can have some fun with it this year. And I want to, I just had a print finish, so I want to get it and show it to you. Isn't it so cool? 
So I just wanted to share a little creation today. Um, I hope you are having a wonderful Monday, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.